Good morning. How's everybody today? We're okay, huh? Thumbs up. Um, so, uh, first of all, I want to thank, uh, thanks so much. Uh, I'm, I'm, lo I'm losing my, my uh, notes here. Whoop. It's subtle. It's not. Well, I want to thank Jeffrey Wilkerson for being here and playing. We very much enjoy your music. And thank you, Sean Michael, for uh, bringing Jeffrey to us. I appreciate that. Um, okay, here we go. So it's um, it, it's uh, been a great week. At, are you? Do you want to say anything, Ashley, or do you want me to? Or we'll do it. Okay, we're kind of punting. We're we're working. We've got a game going on the sidelines. First of all, I want to thank uh, everybody who was involved with the, um, the Create and Care Camp uh, that Ashley uh, designed. Uh, and if you, uh, if you were a volunteer, if you could stand for a moment so we can see who was here and, and uh, that worked on that camp and uh, receive our gratitude and applause. Thank you very much. I, Thank you, you may be seated. One of the things about this camp, it was, it's, uh, uh, we had I think about 20 kids and they really, they had fun, um, they learned a lot. Um, I made a point to try to be at the end, at the, you know, the prayer time at the end and to uh, hear the love and the laughter and the prayers that the children brought forward. Uh, was amazing and it, it was just such a positive experience to help little ones uh, appreciate God's creation uh, and it's one of the best ways I think that we can begin to understand uh, a little bit about God and how we work in creation so it was a terrific camp um, it sounded like the parents very much enjoyed it from what I can tell which is a good thing as well. So thank you, Ashley, and thank you, everyone, for uh, being a part of that. Uh, we do have a Pathways and Compassion meeting uh, tomorrow at noon. It's a brown bag. Um, so anybody who's on the Pathways and Compassion team, uh, please uh, uh, be there if you can. That's our uh, visitation ministry and nursing homes to those who uh, have no one. So a lot of good things are going on there. Matter of fact, we had a, a new record on the Bible study uh, this past week. We had 14 people in our little Bible study service there at the nursing home, which was nice. Uh, this Wednesday night is uh, last Wednesday of the month, so that means last Wednesday of the month, if you care to, gather with us at 6.30. <clears throat> we will either be in the uh, parking lot back here or we'll end up in the M MPR, depending on weather. But what we do uh, on the last Wednesday, we gather, we bring a little food, something to drink, uh, a little bit of socialization, and then we will have a little conversation about a spiritual matter or two. And uh, the conversations have always been terrific. And it's just a great way to, uh, to build your relationship, certainly at the church, the fellowship piece, but also to look at another dimension of God's grace that's working through us in a variety of different ways. So if you haven't been on it, been there, I hope you'll join us, and uh, those who have been there, I can, I'm sure can speak well of it. Um, the, the only other thing I want to just lift up uh, quickly, we do have a leadership team meeting. It's a workshop, I'll call it, Thursday from 10 to 1 o'clock. So we've got a lot of things that we're going to be talking through on the leadership team that will also help uh, me and help us in our work with the board. So there's a lot going on. A lot of good things, and uh, and that's what I have to say. Unless I'm missing something, if there's something else I need to say, I see someone waving. Yes. Yeah, there's a, a Tiger Night, uh, the 27th of August. 
the 25th of August, Tiger Night. Uh, it's, we have advanced this a few times, uh, and tickets are $25. It's kind of a Lutheran night type of thing. And if you are, have not purchased them and are interested, please contact Marie no later than tomorrow uh, in the office. Right, Marie? Sure. And, uh, and we can go from there. All right. Yes. Terrific. Yeah, the tutoring ministry, so that'll be launching pretty soon. How many volunteers do we have now? I haven't got a count. Yeah. Well, it's, it's coming, so that's very exciting. Nicely. All right. Um, anything else? Oh, okay. We're busy today. There's coffee hour today. There's coffee hour today. There's coffee hour today, so... Thank you, Maria. Thank you, thank you. We appreciate that. Going once, going twice. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the, in the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a, a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers us boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy because you are freed and you are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Please stand if you're able for our gathering hymn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your Spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. You want to come up? If you do come up now, Asher, do you have something? Here comes a son. Here comes the son. Maybe two. Hi, Hi, Cameron. All right, I gotta pull up my notes. <sighs> well, we're gonna give you a little preview of what you might uh, experience if you ever come to our camp. How about that? Okay, so we'll see if this works out. Let's have you close your eyes. Can we close our eyes? All right, so I want you to imagine, yeah, there's the sun. Oh. <laughs> the sun is coming out. Do you know how we got that sun? Our story says that God said, let there be light. And there was light. You want to sit down there? All right. So we're back there, and there's light and dark and sky, and we got water, and we got land, and we got earth. And God said, put forth vegetation and plants yielding seeds and trees of every kind. And it happened, and God said it was good. And there's no birds. <laughs> there's no dogs or cats, no chickens. There's just the plants. And God said, hey, waters, let's get creatures and birds in the sky. <laughs> you need to sit on the stairs. <laughs> All right, so we, God said to bring forth animals. Do you have a favorite animal? A cat. All right, so God said, give us cats and... <laughs> ah, give us cats and dogs. So now we have plants and animals. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Can you imagine a world before there were people? Well, that's what we're doing. So you're imagining this world before there are people. And God made the people. And what did God tell the people to do? <laughs> Anyone out there know what God told the people to do? Yes, to take care of the earth. God asks us to take care of the whole earth, all the bugs, all the birds in the sky, and the fish in the sea, and the cats and the dogs. <laughs> so that is our job. All right, so all of you out there who are doing a better job listening, <laughs> that's our job. We have to take care of this planet so that these little guys can have all the cats and the dogs and the plants and the clean air and fresh water they need to live healthy lives. All right, let's have a prayer now. What do you love? 
Okay, you want to go? All right. God, thank you for the creation. Help us care for it so these excited little boys can have a bright future. All right. Amen. <laughs> The first reading today comes from Isaiah 44. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Beside me there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it, let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God beside me? There is no other rock. I know not one. The word of the Lord. Be to God. We read responsively Psalm 86. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. and glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The but you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame, because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. The second reading today is from Romans chapter 8. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown in inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Holy 
Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? And he answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will uh, tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And Jesus said, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evil doers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let everyone who has ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, what have I learned? I'm going to, today I'm going to talk about my, my retreat. I, I, I uh, just came back from a few days ago. Uh, as your pastor, what happens, I get uh, four weeks of vacation a year and two weeks of educational time. And so the retreat was credited to educational time. And um, so I went on this eight-day silent retreat uh, up in Conway, Michigan. If you don't know where Conway is, maybe you know where Petoskey is. It's very, very close to Petoskey. And it took place in a monastery in a retreat center called the St. Augustine Retreat Center. And uh, it was... Uh, a wonderful thing. Uh, there, were, there were in the in the retreat seven participants plus our director, Sister Nancy Brousseau, who is well known throughout the Midwest, giving these types of retreats. We had two Lutheran pastors. One of them obviously was me. We had a United Methodist pastor. We had a professor of theology from uh, Wesleyan Seminary. And we had two sisters, uh, nuns, and then we had a Catholic laywoman who just retired and she was a therapist, psychotherapist by trade. So we were the crew. And uh, so what happens is uh, we gathered the very first night and the question was, what do you hope to receive from this experience? And what I said was very simply, I hope to feel something new, to see something new, to hear something new. Well, the way the retreat works, it's in silence, and so, but there are two times when we talk. We, we visit with our, our retreat director, Sister Nancy, once a day for a half hour to 45 minutes or so, and then at the end of the day, around 7, 7.30, we break up in two groups, and we share for about a half hour what we experienced. And that's 
Otherwise, we're in complete silence the whole time. And the silence part really didn't bother me. I, I've done some of that before, but what re really struck me as odd was we only got two meals, one at 10 and one at 5.30. And I eat more often than that, so I thought, this is going to be a real struggle. Uh, but, I, I, you know, I want to lose that perpetual five pounds and stuff like that, so I thought, well, maybe I'll lose the five pounds, and sadly, I can, uh, that didn't happen. Uh, I gained three pounds, but uh, I realized, I compensated, uh, and I thought to myself, these plates look pretty hearty. But anyway, it was fun and it was good. And so, with Sister Nancy, and trying to understand, to feel something new and to experience something new, I, I, I said to Sister, I said, you know, I have been consumed with the shalom my whole life. I think, I sleep, I eat, I drink it, and I am, I, that's my life as far as my, you know, and, and I, but I still have this emptiness, and so she said, explain the shalom, she said, I know your piece on that, and it's great, but, so I said, what happened was, of all the pieces of shalom. So it started for me, it started with compassion. And I was maybe six or seven years old when it really clicked in. And it started because my mother, mental health problems, in and out of Northville State Hospital. And then lots of people with mental health problems would come to the house when my mom was healthy for Sunday dinner. So I spent a lot of time in my youth with hurting people. And for some reason, I didn't run away from them. I, I, I ran to them and I was, you know, in, in, in community with them, which was great. And that, so that compassion continued on in a variety of different ways. And uh, I thought it was, you know, it is what it is. Then comes justice. Justice popped for me, I don't know, maybe age eight, nine, ten, somewhere in there. And the justice issue that hit for me was uh, the racial disparity discrimination and disparities uh, that I saw with my own nine or ten year old eyes. I saw the fact that blacks were treated differently and they were not treated better. And it bothered me, it disturbed me as a young lad. I could see it, I could hear it. I didn't have to read about it, nobody had to teach me. I, you know, I could see what's going on. And it really, really laid heavy on my heart. It laid uh, real heavy on my heart, and uh, so the justice piece clicked in. It clicked in. And uh, then a few years later, so I've got compassion, I've got justice, and then about in the mid-20s, um, I picked up grace. And the way I picked up grace is I got very involved in fundraising, community organizing, and this type of stuff and lots of different formats and levels, uh, and um, hoping that people would volunteer and financially contribute to causes that would help people who were hurting. And so I go knee deep into this, so now I'm carrying that along, and it's, it's a thing, and I'm consumed with all this stuff, and I keep moving and I keep moving, and then, and then comes forgiveness. Uh, oh, mid-30s or so, somebody did something very bad to me and my family, really, really bad. And uh, I was really, really angry. But what I realized, what I realized is I was going to have to forgive this person or my life would be a mess. And it took a year and a half of intense prayer. It took a long, long time for that forgiveness to be actualized. Uh, but it was such a relief when it finally came. And, and, then, and then, right around the same time, mercy hit. And mercy hit me uh, in a beautiful way. God uh, spoke to me in a powerful way Christmas Eve of 1987 at Manresa Jesuit Retreat House. And uh, from all these things, here is compassion. Well, 
With that told and uh, carrying that around, I spent a lot of time on the grounds over at St. Augustine's. I, uh, uh, maybe 15 acres or something like that, uh, it's, which is nice, but it's not too big. If you're there eight days, you're wandering around, you're spending a lot of time quiet, you're not talking. Uh, you really observe things, you know, and maybe your mind <laughs> gets going a little bit, but I, I felt like I made friends with a couple of trees. One was a pine tree, I called him Sam. He was old and wise. He had this gray beard that consisted of dead branches when the sunshine hit it. And then it became greener and greener and greener all the way to the top. And that tree was the biggest tree around. And I just, I looked at it, I imagined, I said, well, we're a couple of old trees, aren't we? And uh, just, uh, thought about that. There was another tree next to, I named many, I'm only going to name two. There was another tree not far from Sam, which uh, a very different tree, it was a red maple and it was fresh, it was in the prime of its life, it was full of energy, uh, uh, red and I called it Rita. I said that's, a, that's Rita the tree and anyway we uh, had fun. I, uh, I, I occasionally walked up a hill um, that was the cemetery where the nuns were buried. And uh, as I looked at that, I said, I, I thank these sisters who uh, uh, were buried up there for their contributions, for their sacrifice that made this place in part possible. And it was a wonderful thing. And, I've always felt that it's so important for us, no matter who we are or where we are, to remember or to at least imagine the sacrifices that had gone on before our arrival in any kind of a situation, a church or other kinds of organizations, that so much dedication, so much energy uh, that uh, goes into these things, we are the beneficiaries of, on one level, and as we move forward in our days, we uh, have the opportunity to set the stage for the next generation, however that might work. It reflected on a lot of scripture, a lot of scripture. Um, I won't go through all those reflections, but I did reflect on, on the unity prayer very heavily. That's the prayer in the upper room at the Last Supper about Jesus, his father, Jesus, his disciples, and the disciples amongst themselves. I reflected a lot on uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was going through his agony when he said, hey, Father, if there's a way to dodge this bullet, if, if there's any other way to go, I'm totally all ears. And of course, he was tended to by the angels. He was strengthened to be able to continue uh, to finish that part of his ministry. And others. Um, the, the one thing that framed this retreat for us was the work of a, a Jesuit full, uh, theologian, uh, physicist, paleontologist, Teilhard de Chardin. And uh, within all of this, Teilhard de Chardin wrote in the 30s, kind of, but he saw God in everything. And he saw and studied that God has always been creating and is always creating new levels of interdependence within creation and that we as a humanity are part of that creation. And we too, living in this quantum world, are changing more than we might realize. But it's all God's. Deschartan would call it the divine milieu. And so we worked with that a little bit. Well, one morning, one morning, Nancy says to me, Sister Nancy, she says, so uh, I remember that you and Pastor Ken talked about uh, the story of being yoked. That was the message I preached here two weeks ago before my retreat, that Jesus says, uh, my yoke is easy. 
follow me. Uh, we can go together. We can make things happen. And uh, I said, yeah, that's what we preached. And she asked me a question. She said, are you yoked to Jesus? And she said, the reason I ask you a question, Mark, is because everything I hear about your experiences with compassion, I hear all these I statements. I did this. I did that. I'm doing it. I'm consumed. But I don't hear God. Now she says, I know you're doing the work of God. That's clear. This is stuff. But you, are you yoked? I said, I'm not yoked. Thank you. She said, you can't do this alone. You can't do this alone. There's no way to sustain what you're doing. Of course you want it. You're empty. I'm empty, I said. It's true. Let God guide you. Put that yoke on. It's easy. God will follow you. You go step by step. It's not up to you. It, for me, was a life-changing peace, see. Have I preached about Jesus being in us? Of course. God being in us? Of course. I've preached this stuff. I believe it always, but I didn't allow it to feed me. That was huge. I mean, that's big. There's nothing more that could be said. And uh, I spent time letting go. Time submitting my life to Jesus. Time not trying to go alone. That's what I learned. And so, I, if this identifies with you, praise God. Or if you identify with it, praise God. It means for me, though, to me, to turn my life over all the time and, and to think, how do I articulate? Does it change the way I preach? I teach? Etc. By necessity, it will. On some level. It ain't me. It ain't me. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. As the pastor at St. John, I will tell you, I love my ministry. Love it. I get up every morning saying thank you. I love you. I am, this is, I'm living the dream. And even more so now that I realize I got Jesus right with me. I don't have to do it alone. And that's a good thing. Moving forward, like all ministries, we will have our challenges. If you don't have challenges in ministries, there's something wrong. If everything's just hunky-dory, well, there's something wrong. But there are things that we'll be working on together uh, over the next, I don't know, let's just say the next 12 months for sake of a something. And we'll have opportunities to look at various aspects of ministry, how we're impacted by it, how we can share God's love with each other in the world. And as we do this as a community, we will have an opportunity to become that much closer 
to listen to each other that much more intently and to remember that whatever we're doing, whatever you're doing, you are not alone. Remember just how much God loves you. Amen. confess what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. This is a time in our service where we share joys and prayers. If we have joys of how God is moving in our life that we want to share, or if there are prayer requests that we want to lift up at this time. Prayer requests for joys. Are you doing? Ah, all right. I've got the, the joys of all the wonderful people who helped with camp, uh, the wonderful campers, and the beautiful weather we had. Thank you. I 
I'd like to uh, say a prayer for my good friend of 40 years, Su Susan, who is helping her mother pass even as we speak, and to have her have the courage to help that happen peacefully. She was in the rehab, and that was not going well, and uh, she got a bad infection. She's in the hospital now, medical care only, no rehab. And when they get a handle on the infection, and they put her on a liquid diet for another issue, and then we'll see where we go from there, whether she goes back to rehab or whether she goes home with some kind of a home health care. I'm already mic'd. Um, this is going to be news to my husband. Um, I would ask her some prayers and I, uh, praise and hope. Um, my brother is going to be coming into town from the West Coast on Tuesday, and it was a surprise email I got yesterday. I have not seen this brother in 15 years. I have never met my niece and nephew, and he decided... He, he has issues he's dealt with by separating himself from the family and done very successfully at it. So prayers that this is a good family reunion for all sides. Amen. Amen. Yes. This is from uh, Lorraine Steer, a prayer request for our grandson, Cameron Morse, who is in the hospital. Thank you. And we'll give a little bit of praise for a successful Farmington Founders Festival. Weather was very good. A little rain at the end, a little rain at the beginning, maybe a little lightning, but it was a really good festival and general discussions with lots of people as they were happy to see it back downtown. Thank you. I have a praise for the um, camp and Ashley's leadership and what a wonderful job it was and all the volunteers and also for the Dresdens and the Boy Scouts and the tent because it was a game changer. All right, it's good to hear from the community in a service like this. It's a part of the Holy Spirit knitting us together, and that's a good thing. And so, confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, for those in need, and all of creation. O oh God, you call your church to announce the gospel of reconciliation and truth, both near and far. Guide your church as it seeks your wisdom and shares it, trusting your spirit bearing witness among us. Hear us, O oh God. You brought forth all creation and called it good. Direct policymakers to protect lands and seas. Bring rain to sun-parched fields and protect areas impacted by natural disasters. Hear us, O oh God. You desire peace among nations and peoples. Guard our neighborhoods from hatred. Watch over police officers and firefighters. And teach us to advocate for those who live in fear. Hear us, O oh God. You are gracious and merciful, comforting those who suffer any affliction. Sustain your people living with HIV or AIDS, provide shelter for all who are unhoused, and release any who are unjustly imprisoned. Hear us, O oh God. 
You name each of us as your children. Guide our hospitality ministry to welcome all, our education ministry to equip us for faithful living, and our social ministry to enact the gospel in our community. Hear us, O oh God. You send faithful people to proclaim freedom from bondage and to renew your church. Encourage us by the witness of the faithful departed, including Birgitta of Sweden, whom the church commemorates today, so that we live into that same hope. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we commend all those to whom we pray in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. stand as you're able. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior, Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Jesus was betrayed, he gathered his disciples in an upper room to say goodbye with the final meal. And as the meal began, Jesus took bread. He broke it, and he gave it to each of his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. And after the meal, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. And remember me. We know that with the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are strengthened to share his love with a world that desperately needs it. And so together, let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. All people called to Christ's table, come and eat, for it is good. And to our dear friends on Facebook Live and Zoom, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us uh, now to spread your generosity into the world through the one who is the dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Uh, I'd like to now invite uh, Walt Lonsky. If, is Walt here? He had to leave. Okay. So, all right. We are doing a Godspeed today for um, two very dear members. For Pat Grancy, who is currently on Zoom, she'll be returning back to her home in... In what? Wisconsin? Jamesville, Wisconsin. I do the Wisconsin, Minnesota thing. I keep screwed up. She's going to go back home to, with her family, and, and she's been a wonderful me member for so many years. Walt Lunsky is leaving us to move to a, a retirement village uh, uh, extended care facility in Brighton so that he can be closer to his daughter who lives in Howell. And so uh, we give God's speed to both of them. Uh, this is a reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made both of you a member of this church. When you came to St. John, we rejoiced and welcomed you in the mission that we share as the people of God. In this community, Pat and Walt, you have come to know and share God's loving purpose for you and for all creation. God has blessed us with you in this community, and God has blessed us through you. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for Walt and for Pat and for the time they have shared with us. As, she and, as they have been a blessing to us, now send them forth to be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May God bless us with discomfort and easy answers and half-truths, so that we may live deep within our hearts. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and the exploitation of people, so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless us with enough hope to believe that through Christ we can make a difference in this world. Amen. Please stand.
Christ. To be sanctuary that welcomes and serves all. Go in peace. Share the harvest. Thanks be to God.